Good afternoon and thank you for joining me, uh, Royalty Yasharel, on the Way Enlightened Gathering. I have a very important message from Yahuwah today. Um, this message is entitled, Trump is the last president of the United States. The stage is set. America is in its final hours. The countdown to our second exodus begins. Trump is the last president of the United States. The stage is set. America is in its final hours. The countdown to our second exodus begins. All right. Now, we know today is approaching very quickly to the year 2021. And Yahuwah is saying that the year 2021 is a year of change, rapid change, quick and sudden change at times. As also a year of quick and sudden transformations. Um, this message that I have for you today comes from a dream that I had on October the 8th, 2020. And this message is um, that I bring to you is with great sadness and one of great joy. Um, one, because it is a two-edged sword. This message on one end, it cuts divides and separates, and on the other end, it brings together and restores. So, before I begin, I would like to pray, and then I'll get right into this dream that was given to me, and also from the dream, I received a timeline of events to occur, um, mainly beginning now into um, next year, and then a few years after that. So let's go ahead and pray. Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Tassavao, our great and awesome King, our great and awesome Creator. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and end, the all-seeing and all-knowing Elohim. We give you all honor and praise today. Father Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Tassavao, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let thy perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Yahuwah, I ask that you would take over. Let the Ruach HaKadosh fill me. Less of me and more of you, Yahuwah. Let this word bring life to the hearer and let those that hear it be a, he a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. And I thank you for this word and this in, uh, prophetic interpretation and timeline that you have for your people. And I thank you that we shall go ahead and bring forth the message and that nothing will hinder this message from being released today. In the mighty name, Yahushua HaMashiach's name, we pray to you, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah Tessavo, be all the glory, honor, and praise forever and ever. Hallelujah. All right. So, this dream, like I said, was on October 8th, 2020. Now, um, I'm going to go over the dream and then in the sequences of the timeline that Yahuwah gave me, after I came out of the dream and woke up the next morning, um, I began to pray and meditate and ask God to Yahuwah to reveal to me what this dream is actually was saying and what he wanted me to get from this dream and what else was to come about pertaining this, this dream. Um, and there he was able to give me a timeline that I was able to confirm with scripture. So from this timeline of events that I will share with you, he also gave me uh, uh, scriptures, uh, a good amount of scriptures, as well as a sequence of the way, the, the, the sequence that he wanted me to read the scriptures to you so that this dream and timeline would come together and make more sense for us. All right, so, um, let me begin with the, the dream. How this dream occurred, there in the dream, I opened a letter. Um, it was written on a paper or a napkin, um, but it was folded. It was folded 
And so I unfolded this letter or napkin um, and then on the, the paper, it was written, are you an overtaker? Are you an overtaker? And so from that, um, the next line says, said, till I warn you and overtake the Uranians, pray for restoration. Pray for restoration. And so I begin to pray and meditate on those words. And um, as I begin to look up the word overtaker, I saw in the English dictionary, the definition of overtake is to move up to and pass someone or something that is in front of you by moving faster, to happen to or affect someone in a sudden and unexpected way. This is the definition of overtake. And then I looked up the word restoration and it means the action of returning something to a former owner, place, or condition. The return of a hereditary monarch to a throne, a head of state, to government, or a regime to power. And so this is the definition of restoration. And so as I begin to pray and ask Yahuwah to reveal what he wants me to get from this prophetic dream, he began to give me a timeline. And I'm going to go through the timeline. And from that, I'm going to go back and begin with the scriptures that he uh, gave me and the sequence in the way that he gave them to me to share with you today. And so from that, we will be um, reading quite a few scriptures, and I will try to um, list those scriptures in the description box so that you can go back and read them completely, thoroughly, and meditate on those and ask Yahuwah um, to reveal to you uh, what he would like to reveal to you pertaining to this dream and this word today. Okay, so from the timeline, um, going back to the title of this message um, is entitled that Trump is the last president of the United States. The stage is set, America's in its final hours, winning years, and the countdown to our second exodus begins. So when I go through these scriptures, this will make a lot more sense to you, what I'm saying and what Yahuwah is saying. So let's start with this timeline. So now um, the timeline starts with uh, Genesis 15. We're going to read Genesis 15. I'm going to read it in the King James Version, but I will be um, using the restored names of Yahuwah, God, and his son, Yahusha, the Hamashiach. So I will be using the restored names whenever I'm reading the scripture. There will be a few times that I'll go to the Sefer, and, um, but mainly I'll be reading from King James Version. Um, one or two scriptures will be um, from the NIV and one from the Amplified. Now, um, so the Genesis 15... I'm going to go ahead and read to you uh, Genesis 15. I kind of want to go through the timeline, but I think that it will make more sense if I will start with Genesis 15 and then um, go from there. All right. So I'm going to read Genesis 15, the full chapter starting with verse 1 in the King James Version. And I would suggest you get your Bible or your Bible app out and follow along with me. And um, so we will begin now. After these things, the word of Yahuwah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said to Yahuwah, Elohim, What will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, 
Thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Yahuwah came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be, in thy, be thine heir. And he brought forth, he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thy be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Yahuwah and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am Yahuwah that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Yahuwah Elohim, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward they shall come out with great substance. substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham, saying unto thy seed, have I given this land from the river of Egypt? unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenizzites, and the Kadmonites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Raphams and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. Okay. All right. So this is talking about Abraham's seed being in a land that they do not know for 400 years they will be oppressed and enslaved. And then after that, they will come out and come back to the land of Canaan where Abraham was at the time. And they will come out with great substance, great wealth. All right. And then he does say that the Amorites, their um, iniquity is not yet full at the time of Abraham. So, this is having a, this has a lot to do with this timeline because from this word that he uh, Yahuwah gave me in the dream, um, are you an overtaker? And then he says, till I warn you and overtake the Uranians, he said Uranians, and I immediately thought about the land of Ur or Ur um, that uh, Abraham was from, and so the Chaldeans, the Amorites. This immediately made me think of the, the, the Uranians. Um, and so from there, um, it talks about, the timeline talks about us coming from a land. After 400 years, we will know for sure. And we know that the HR 4539 bill or 4529 at the time, I, right now it's kind of late, so I don't exactly know the number of the bill. No, I, let me check that out for you. Let me get that. The HR bill. I'll just say that. <laughs> I did a um, message on that previously. 4539 bill. And so from there, the HR bill set it as surety, made it sure that we had been here 400 years. From here, we will go out with great substance back to the land of Canaan. 
And so this dream and this timeline is actually telling me uh, what he's saying when he says, are you an overtaker? And then till I warn you to overtake the Uranian, till I warn you and overtake the Uranians. In the, in, when he was talking to Abraham in Genesis 15, he told them that he told him that the uh, iniquity of the Amorites, which I believe the Iranians are the same people, uh, that their iniquity was not yet full at that time. But it is coming upon a time where their iniquity is full. And so now, Yahuwah is getting ready to deal with that situation. All right, so he's getting ready to, he says, till I warn you and overtake the Iranians, Pray for restoration. And so for restoration, he's speaking of Yahuwah's people, Yasharel, that we shall be restored and pray for restoration. And so from there, he gave me this timeline that, and, um, that we will be coming out of this land, going back to the land of Canaan in that region where Iraq, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, um, also, uh, there is, um, Turkey, Lebanon, I won't say Jordan, and even, um, that region is some parts of the state of Israel. All right. So from there and par partially Afghanistan could also be close to that in that region, but for specific, specifically Iraq, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon. Now he showed me this timeline that he will be, they will be overtaken by the year 2022. These regions near Canaan and where Canaan is, where the Babylonians were, um, were in this region. And there was once uh, the Israelites were taken captive in this area. So what we're saying here in the Babylonian region, they will be overtaken by 2022. And so if you look at some things, there are some things taking place right now concerning this. Um, I've been seeing information here shortly after this dream. There was a video by a popular YouTuber that gives um, perfect uh, world events and he puts those out as they occur. And so he was showing me two days after I had this dream, he was showing me where Turkey, Lebanon, Syria, and parts of Israel were on fire. And they had no explanation from how this fire, these fires started or how they occurred, but they were burning a large amount of land. And then after that, um, you know, I saw a 7.0, 7.0 earthquake and tsunami that hit Turkey and Greece where they had a death toll rising there. Um, we know Lebanon had had uh, two explosions. And then I saw in Beirut, um, December the 6th, there was a reported of cataclysmic hailstorm. Um, and so there, and then now December 14th, you've got landslides going on in Israel. Um, the state of Israel, Tel Aviv, you got, you got um, torrential floods and you see vehicles and cars and things just flooding down the street and things are going on at this time. After this dream occurred, he began to show me and these will mainly be from natural disasters that he will begin to, to, to overtake this region of land that we will be going back to uh, shortly. And so from there, he says we will be in the wilderness um, in this area and we will start migrating out of this land, out of America, starting in the year 2021. Now, he was showing me an area of time, a time of late August, late summer. So it could be possibly late August, uh, September, but basically late summer around September, there will be large groups that will start large groups of the Yasharel 
uh, Yah's people that will be leaving out of this land, out of America, going back to the land of Canaan, what we just read about in Genesis 15, where Yahuwah was speaking to Abraham that your people, after 400 years, you'll know for sure you've been in, they've been in that land 400 years and oppressed, and then they'll come back to this land. And now he is saying that the time of the Amorites is now full, their iniquity. And now he is dealing with them at this time so that we will be able to come back to that land and so that we will be able to dwell there. And so this will begin in 2021. You will see large groups of Yasharel, Israel, the, the tribe of Israel, preferably Judah, leaving America, going back to the land that Abram was in. When he was speaking to, Yahuwah was speaking to him in Genesis 15. And so we will begin to go out. And so I really strongly believe that there will be the cruise ship that are probably have been very much affected by the pandemic. Cruise ship, the, the cruise ship, they will be using those to help transport us out of this um to america from america back to the land of canaan in that region near iraq turkey syria lebanon in that region and so that will begin in year 2021 possibly like i said late september late uh, summer august late august early september so the first group of people that will begin to leave in 2021 of yasharel will be um they may actually spend the first high holy days that are occurring in September. They may be the first group to actually spend those high holy days over in the land, the region where Canaan would be. And that would be awesome. That would be very awesome. And so from 2021, which I said previously, is the year of rapid change and transformation. All right. Some even quick and sudden changes and so when we look at this timeline he showed me where we will begin that second exodus in that time period of september 2021 and that 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 migration will begin in 2021 and will end about 2025 where we will be out of this land in canaan and so from there we're going to um we would need to be out of America before the year 2025. You would need to be already out of America, back in the land of Canaan, which some will call the wilderness. And then we will need to be out of this country, America, by 2025. It's very imperative that you listen to me. Because as I said, Trump is the last president of the United States. So we will need to be, while he has this second term, and I know a lot of things are going on and very unclear, but he is the last president of the United States, and Yahuwah will confirm that shortly. And so you would need to be out of here before his, last, his second term ends by the year 2025. You would need to already be over in the land, the region of Canaan. And I'm going to let you know because that that period of time, there's going to be some things that will start to take place because Yahuwah is going to judge this nation where we were enslaved. Okay. All right. And so from there, as it says in Genesis 15, verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. So what we're looking at is a timeline and I'm just going to break the timeline and then we're going to go back. So what I want to discuss here is um, Trump is going to play a very important role in our exodus out of America. And so his, he, Yahuwah is not finished with Trump. If you know or know anything about the pop, the Bible tables or the Bible codes where basically there's a message in the message, in the scriptures that are decoded, um, there's a Rabbi Glacenser, Glacenser, Glacerson on YouTube that has Bible tables 
that can kind of confirm some of this about the end of America and the, the wilderness and, and, and giving the land back to the people shall inherit, his people shall inherit the land. And I'm talking about the land. Now, I don't, um, you know, condone or, or give credit to people, but I do know there are timelines and tables that have been showing this time period, 2021, Cyrus. Cyrus is showing up in the Bible tables in this period. Actually, been showing up since about 2016, 2017, according to the tables that um, this Rabbi Glacianson has been doing. And so he's showing up in the timeline of this time period because he's going to play a very important role. Now, uh, the, the state of Israel, they have a coin. They show Trump and Cyrus. They believe this is the same person as far as the, the same person. And with him showing up in the timeline of 2021, 2017 and up to this time, Cyrus is showing up because at this point, someone is playing the role of Cyrus. Yahuwah is using someone to play this role role in Cyrus. And if you know anything about Cyrus, um, the Amorites and the Uranians, and I say the Uranian people from Europe, Babylonians, uh, Iraq, they were the same people who had taken the Israelites captive as slaves in the Babylonian period during the time of the Persian King Cyrus, who invaded the Babylonia who invaded Babylonia after the Israelites cried out to Yahuwah in prayer to deliver them from the hands of the Babylonians. Now, King Cyrus, he defeated the Babylonians in his first year of reign, and but he did not touch any of the Israelites. And not only that, he allowed them to go back to the land of Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And so he was he allowed them to worship Yahuwah and to be able to take the sacred vessels of the temple that the Babylonians had taken. He allowed them to take those sacred vessels back to Jerusalem and he gave them substance to actually go back and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. So with that being said, we're going to read Daniel 1, and I'm going to look at that in the King James Version, and then from there we're going to look at Isaiah 44, 45, 46, and 47. And this is going to be a little more clear about how this is going to play out. Let me just go ahead and go to Daniel 1, and if you have your Bibles or your Bible app, I would like for you to follow along. Daniel 1, verse 1. All right. Okay. So in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And Yahuwah gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of Yahuwah which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his Elohim. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his Elohim. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his Enoch, Enoch, that he should bring certain of the children of Yasharel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank. So nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now among these were 
of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the Enoch's gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael, Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah, Azariah of Abednego, of Abednego. And, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the Enoch's that he might not defile himself. Now, Yahuwah had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enoch's. And the prince of the Enoch said unto Daniel, I fear my Elohim, the king, who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the Enoch had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thy seeth, deal with thy servants." So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Mazar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. As for these four children, Yahuwah gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the Enoch brought them in, in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. All right. So from here, we're going to go ahead and go to... Isaiah 44 in the King James Version. And we're going to look and see who Cyrus, who is Cyrus. All right, so Isaiah 44, King James Version, let's begin. Yet now hear, O Jacob, or Yaakov, my servant, and Yasharel, whom I have chosen. Thus says Yahuwah that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Yaakov, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. 
and they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. One shall say, I am Yahuwah, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, or Yaakov, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto Yahuwah, and surname himself by the name of Yasharel. Thus says Yahuwah, the king of Yasharel, and his redeemer, the Yahuwah of hosts, Yahuwah to Sabaoth, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no Elohim. And who, as I, shall call and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a Elohim beside me? Yea, there is no Elohim. I know not any. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. And they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Who hath formed a Elohim or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, and the workmen, they, they are of men. Let them all be gathered together. Let them stand up, yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the coals and fashioned it with hammers and worketh it with the strength of his arms. Yea, he is hungry and his strength faileth. He drinketh no water and is faint. The carpenter stretch, stretcheth out his rule. He marketh it out with a line. He fitted it with plans, planes, and he marketh it out with the compass and maketh it after the figure of a man, according to the beauty of a man, that it may remain in the house. He heweth him down cedars, and taketh the cypress and the oak which he strengtheneth for himself among the trees of the forest. He planteth an ash, and the rain doeth nourish it. Then shall it be for a man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Yea, he kindleth it and baketh bread. Yea, he maketh a Elohim and worshipeth it. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down there, there too. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Yea, he has warmed himself and said, Aha! I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue thereof he maketh an Elohim, even his graven image. He falleth down unto it and worshipeth, and prayeth unto it and saith, Deliver me, for thy art my Elohim. They have not known nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot understand. And none considereth in his heart, neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also, I have baked bread unto the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Shall I fall down to the stalk of a tree? He feedeth on ashes, and deceiveth heart hath turned him aside. He feedeth on ashes, a deceived heart has turned him aside, that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, Is there not a lie in my right hand? Remember these, O Yaakov and Yasharel, for thou art my servant, I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Yasharel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy seeds. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for Yahuwah hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, 
break forth in singing, into singing, yea, mountains, O forests, and every tree therein. For Yahuwah hath redeemed Yaakov and glorified himself in Yasharel. Thus says Yahuwah, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Yahuwah that maketh all things, that stretcheth, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Thy frustrated the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that confirmeth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah you shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places thereof that saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers, that saith of Cyrus, He is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure. Even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to thy temple, thou foundation shall be laid. All right, so we're going to go to, Genesis, to Isaiah 45. Verse 1, King James Version. Thus says Yahuwah to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holded to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two left gates. To the two left gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I am Yahuwah, which call thee by thy name and the God, the, the Elohim of Yasharel. For Yahuwah, my servant's sake, and Yasharel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. Thou, though thou hast not known me, I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. There is no Elohim beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know me from the rising of the sun and from the west, and there is none beside me. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahuwah, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, Yahuwah, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the pot shared serve. Let the pot shears strive with the pot shears of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What maketh thy? What makest thy? Or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman who hast thou brought forth? Who hast thou? Who hast thou brought forth? Thus says Yahuwah, the Holy One of Yasharel, and his Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. And he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, says Yahuwah to Sabaoth. Thus saith Yahuwah, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee. 
in chains, they shall come over and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely Elohim is in thee, and there is none else. There is no Elohim. Verily, thou art an Elohim that hiddest thyself. O Yahuwah of Yasharel, the Savior, they shall be ashamed and also confounded all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. But Yasharel shall be saved in Yahuwah with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. But thus says Yahuwah that created the heavens, Elohim himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I set not unto the seed of Yaakov. Seek ye me in vain. I, Yahuwah, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations, that have no knowledge, that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto an Elohim that cannot save. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who have declared this from ancient time? Who have told it from that time? Have not I, Yahuwah? And there is no Elohim else beside me a just Elohim and a savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am Elohim and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say, in Yahuwah have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In Yahuwah shall all the seed of Yasharel be justified and shall glory. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead to Isaiah 46, and we're also going to look at 47. And from that, we're going to be able to, that's not where I wanted to go. Okay. Isaiah 46. I'm going the long route. I should be able to just go forward. But Verse 1, we're going to read the chapter. All right. Thus says, let's see, hold on a minute. All right. Bell bowed down, Nebo stupid. Their idols were upon the beast and upon the cattle. Your carriages were heavy loaden. They are a burden to the weary beast. They stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but themselves are gone into captivity. Hearken unto me, O house of Yaakov, and all the remnant of the house of Yasharel, which are born from me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to the whorehairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. To whom will ye liken me and make me equal and compare me that we may be like? They lavish gold out of the bag and weigh silver in the balance and hire a goldsmith and he make it an Elohim. They fall down, yea, they worship. They bear him upon the shoulder. They carry him and set him in, high, in his place and he standeth. From his place shall he not remove? Yea, one shall cry unto him. Yet can he not answer nor save him out of his trouble? Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Remember the former things of old, for I am Yahuwah, and there is none else. I am Elohim, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, 
and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Hearken unto me, you stout hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry, and I will place salvation in Zion for Yasharel, my glory. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So we're going to go ahead and read Isaiah 47. And then from there, I'm going to kind of recap what we're discussing here with this and how Cyrus is playing a part in this next um, exodus. All right, so Isaiah 47. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter. This is verse 1. Uh, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind mill. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, they shame, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, Yahuwah to Sabaoth is his name, the Holy One of Yasharel. Sit thy silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into the, thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient haste, thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. So that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Therefore hear now this, that thou art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that saith in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment, in one day, that loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, Thou hast said, None seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge. It hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises, and mischief, mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let not the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly procrastinators, pro prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee, with whom thou have labored, even thy merchant from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. All right. All right. Hallelujah. So we're looking, we've read Isaiah 44, 45, 46, and 47. It has talked about King Cyrus. And so what Yahuwah is showing me that Trump is in the spirit of King Cyrus in this day and time. He would be very instrumental in assisting Yahuwah's people uh, with the second exodus 
coming from America, going back to the land. And we will leave here with great substance, just as we left Egypt. We are in our Egypt now. The 400 years has ended. August 2019 marked the 400 years. From there, we are going back to the land and we will leave here with great substance according to Genesis 15 and we will go back to the land where Abraham is, which was Canaan in that time. Uh, in the Iraq, Turkey, Syria, that region of time, area where it was once a Babylonian uh, nation. And so King Cyrus uh, is showing back up on the scene and I believe um, that Yahuwah is showing me that it is Trump that he's using in the spirit of Cyrus in this day and time to, to, to assist his people, his chosen Yasharel, to exit out of this Mitzrayim, this present day Egypt, to go back to the land. And we will leave with great substance. Um, I believe you will begin to see reparations being offered. And from there, they would also be assistance and I believe that where you see the cruise ships being um, out of work and out of business because of what's going on now in this time with the plagues and the pandemics, you will begin to see those ships being employed to assist Yasharel in the exodus out of America back to Canaan. And so we, uh, the stage is set, you know, this exodus is about, is, is, has begun. It's getting ready. It, the countdown has begun for this exodus and it will begin to take place. You will see it in 2021 around the summer, September. You will begin to see groups, large groups of the Israelites, the Yasharel that is here in America, Judah, um, their Ephraim. You will see them go over back to Canaan. And so uh, I believe that Trump is in it spirit of King Cyrus at this time and Yahuwah is using him because he is showing up in the Bible tables and the Bible codes with this time period again. And so, um, so I believe that Yahuwah is not finished with Trump. He still will get the second term because he still has unfinished business that Yahuwah is going to use him. And he is the only uh, person in scripture, King Cyrus, that is a non-Israelite that Yahuwah called a Messiah. Because at the time when the Babylonians had taken the Hebrew Israelites captive, he was a savior, so to speak, in getting them back, back to their land to rebuild the temple. And they were able to take their sacred vessels back that were taken from them. And also they, they were given substance to go back to build the temple with. And I believe that this same very thing will happen to Yah's people who are here in America. All right, so we're going to now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 52. I want to touch on that scripture here. It's going to be in the King James Version because um, I want you to see what this scripture is saying here and um, how this lines up with everything that we're discussing today. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 52. And I really want to take a look with this. Let's see. All right. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I find that very interesting that um, he says at the last trump. He didn't say at the, 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 he didn't use any other word but the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. And if you look into the Sefer version, you will be able to see that he says the shofar shall sound. And that's the version that I usually read from, but I wanted to make sure that you all understand there's more Hebrew words in the separate version. So I want to make sure you understand those who may not know 
the Hebrew names for the different places. And so it says here in King James, trumpet shall sound. But in the Sefer, it says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the chauffeur shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So that, I find that interesting that he says at the last trump. He could have said at the last shout, at the last sound, at the last blow, but he said at the last trump. And that has stood out to me. So this is a scripture that he, he gave me. And so we're going to go ahead now and read Genesis 49. Now I'm going to read that in the Sefer version. So I do have this printed out. If you have the Sefer Bible, the Sefer app, you can go to Genesis 49, chapter 49, verses 8 through 12. And so I'm going to begin to read that. Yahuwah, you are he whom your brethren shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Yehuda, which is Judah, we're here in America, is a lion's whelp for the prey. My son, you are gone up. He stooped down. He couched between his feet. He couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rise rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor a Torah giver from between his feet until Shiloh come and until him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. This is Genesis chapter 49, verse 8 through 12 in the Sefer version. So from there, we're going to, um, this is what he's saying, Judah. Now, Judah, we know because Genesis 15 told us we will be in the land of slave and oppressed for 400 years. And we will know for sure that we were here 400 years. So the HR bill marked that time from um, August 1619 to August 2019. I have a previous video concerning that and I would suggest that you look at that. Um, and so that is the one before this video that goes in more detail about who Judah is and who, you, you know, who Yasharel is here in America. So he's letting you know that Yehuda is going to um, begin to gather the people and that we shall be the one that will begin to start raising this whole situation here in America up. And we will begin to migrate back. And from there, all of Yasharel shall come together as one tribe. And so the scepter will not depart from Judah. All right. So let me get back to the timeline because this is very important, this timeline that we have. So, Let's recap. So the, the dream said, are you an overtaker? This is how the paper opened. And this is the question that was written on it. Are you an overtaker? And then it said, till I warn you and overtake the Iranians. And we have seen that that is the land of Ur, the Chaldeans or the Amorites that were previously the Babylonians, that region of land in Iraq, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, that region of land there. He is saying in the timeline that he showed me, he will be, they will be overtaken by the year 2022, 2022. And he's showing these natural disasters that have already started taking place in those regions there. And so I named those natural disasters and there will be more to come. Now we will begin to leave, like I said, in September, 2021, you'll begin to see Yasharel, Judah, leaving out of America. And so this will begin that second exodus. And that will be start between September 2021 until 2025. And that will be the period of time where Trump is in the second term. And that will, he would assist us into leaving out of here. And so um, now, Yasharel, you would want to be out of here by 2025. Because there are some things that are going to begin to take place in this country 
um, that he has spoken about in his scripture about judging this country. And so from there, there are some things that are going to take place in 2026. Now, I'm going to go ahead and kind of break down this timeline. And then I'm going to go back and kind of break down more of these scriptures that he has given to me so that he can um, show you where this is in scripture here. So from there, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and start with where he says, so from 2025, we would have left America and anyone else who is wanting to, because there's a scripture that talks about with the Yahudim, that means those of from the 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 lineage or of, of Judah, the Yahudim, um, a Hebrew, a Yahudim. This is going to be for every ten Greek or Gentiles. They will grab the skirt tail of the Yahudim and says, "I'm going with you. I want to follow your God." And so this is what you're going to see beginning to happen as we're leaving out of America, going back to the Canaan area where it was discussed in Genesis 15. So we are also going to see, and it's very important because the year 2026, we're going to see some things taking place. Now on this timeline, he showed me that the state of Israel and Iran will go to war around the year 2025 or in the year 2025. And so at that point, he is showing me that the state of Israel will not make it with that war. They will be, they will not, they will cease to exist. That land there will be destroyed by Iran. They will go to war in the year 2025. So that area will be an area where there will be war. And he also showed me 2026, Russia and Iran will take over the United States. Now, I know I'm saying some things that, um, that a lot of people will not want to hear, but this is what Yahuwah has shown me. And so this word, he began to break this thing down and bring out the scriptures that he want me to continue to read to you in this message so that you will have a clear understanding of this. And Yahuwah will be speaking through this scripture and not me. So you'll be able to see this for yourself. Now, Russia and Iran will take over the United States in the year 2026. So this is a very important reason why you would need to leave America before 2025. And so this is also from the year 2026. Russia and Iran would take over the United States. But from there, by 2027, the USA will cease to exist. There will be no more America. China is going to destroy USA and Russia in the year 2027. So this is a very important word. This, this word here is a matter of life and death for you and your family. And I want you to pray and pray that Yahuwah will reveal this information to you. And I pray that you will be a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Because it is in scripture where he says, Yahuwah says, he does not do anything until he first reveal it to his prophets. So this is what is being revealed. This is a warning. And this is a, uh, till I warn you and overtake the Uranians, pray for restoration. For Yah's people to re be restored back to the land. Because this region, this, this America is going to be destroyed. So these Gentile pastors and these people here that are following this, these false gods and these false doctrines, they will not be telling you this. So if you continue to stay under that Gentileness and uh, that Gentile mindset, as I said previously in previous, previous messages and videos, you will not make it. You will not make it. You will need to get under a Israelite, a uh, uh, by a, a Torah keeping 
one who does not deny the true name of the father, Yahuwah, and his son, Yahusha, that keep the law, keep the Torah, and walk in truth. You would need to follow with them to be able to get out of this country and know what it is you need to do when you need to do it. Because this is the information and the prophecy and the warning that Yahuwah has given me. So China will destroy Russia and the United States in the year 2027. So this is very important. So you need to start getting the mindset of simplifying your life because in 2021, things will begin to move rapidly. There will be rapid changes and transformations very quick and sudden at times. And you would need to be able to have your life simplified now to be able to move when the time comes to move and you won't be looking back and turn into a pillar of salt like Salt's, Lot's wife did when it was time to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. She looked back at what she was leaving instead of looking forward to where she was going and she turned into a pillar of salt. So my what Yahuwah is telling me to the to tell you to simplify your life be very careful of what you're doing, even to the point of who you're marrying and what you're marrying and what your relationship with and having children with. Because if they're a Gentile, they may not want to leave. And you don't want to have to leave your children here and leave them when this country, America, is going to be destroyed in the year 2027. Now, on the flip side of this, um, this is going to be China, Germany, North Korea, Iran, they will be part of this World War III, the war of all worlds, which the Bible speaks about the Armageddon. And we're going to look at some scriptures to discuss this. Now, they will also be um, at this, on the other flip side of this, as we are leaving out of America, going back to the region where Canaan was during the time of Abraham. We're going to be in that area for about five years. So like I say, 2021 be, will begin the exodus, shifting out of America, going back to the land that Yahuwah promised us. And we will, that migration will begin between 2025, 2021, excuse me, to 2025. Now these are things showing up in timelines that other that the Bible tables are showing a lot of things that I mentioned with the rabbi and things that you could see these timelines of, of, of at the end of America. He has the uh, rabbi Glacier has timelines that are showing this and the coming of the Mashiach. So this is what Yahuwah is showing me. Now, in the year 2026, Yahusha is going to meet us in the wilderness. This is when he's going to return in that time period. Now, I know the Bible says the day or the hour that Yahusha doesn't even know. But he didn't say you wouldn't know the season or the time period or the year. So he is showing me, Yahuwah has told me that 2026, Yahusha is going to be here with us in the physical form in the wilderness. And from there, he's going to take us to Jerusalem. Because right now, the Jerusalem is desolate. The scripture says that it is desolate. Okay, that, that the land is desolate. That it spewed out the people because of the iniquity. 